Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Gregory Wilpert coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. Norway's Nobel Peace Prize Committee announced on Friday that President Juan Manuel Santos of Colombia is this year's recipient of the Peace Prize. He receives the prize for his work on a peace agreement with the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or the FARC. Let's take a look at what Nobel Committee Chair Casey Coleman Five had to say when she announced the winner. The Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2016 to Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos for his resolute efforts to bring the country's more than 50-year-long civil war to an end, a war that had cost, has cost the life of at, lives of at least 220,000 Colombians and displaced close to 6 million people. The award should also be seen as a tribute to the Colombian people who, despite great hardships and abuses, have not given up hope of a just peace, and to all the parties who have contributed to this peace process. She went on to acknowledge the fact that the peace agreement was not over because just a week earlier, a narrow majority of Colombians voted against the agreement in a referendum. Joining us from Washington, D.C. to talk about the Nobel Peace Prize winner and the future of the peace agreement in Colombia is Cristina Espinel. She is one of the founding members of the Colombian Human Rights Committee and a representative of the campaign C a la Paz in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being on The Real News, Cristina. Okay, thank you. So let's just start with uh, who is President Manuel's, Juan Manuel Santos? Do you think uh, he deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for negotiating the agreement with the FARC? Okay, um, President Juan Manuel Santos, is, this is the second period that he served in Colombia. And I think this negotiation is being very difficult, not only for the government, but for the FARC, because they've been fighting for many years. And finally, after four years, maybe six years of negotiation, they signed the, the agreement in Cartagena. And I think that this is very important. And I think President Santos and the all people in Colombia who are in favor of peace deserve this, this Nobel Prize. Uh, what about, uh, I mean, I guess normally the prize gets awarded for the actions uh, specific that are named in the award itself, but can you say a little bit about more about uh, Juan Manuel Santos? I mean, he was defense minister under the previous president, and, uh, and he was usually always perceived as a bit of a hawk. How do you think that uh, fits with his receiving the prize? I mean, in that sense, what was his role, in other words, before uh, he became president? Oh yeah, he before he became president, he was the minister of defense, and he fought very hard to defeat the FARC. And then he became president, and he started to see how he can start the negotiation with um, with FARC. At the beginning, was secret negotiation, but at the end, everybody everybody realized, and they start to announce that they are talking about peace with the FARC. Well, let's turn to the, um, to the agreement itself. Um, it was uh, narrowly defeated in a referendum, as I mentioned in the uh, introduction last week, by less than 54,000 votes out of over 13 million that were cast. Also, abstention was very high at 63%. What do you think uh, does this low participation rate say to you about the agreement and and um, that the fact that Colombians, that a large majority of Colombians actually did not vote at all. And in the end, only 18% approximately uh, voted against the agreement. Unfortunately, this is the history of Colombia. Always is high abstention. And um, it's always has been the same. I don't know what is going on with my people, but we have to wake up and start to think different, because if we do not participate, we're going to receive the consequences that we are now suffering now. We don't vote, and now we are in this situation. Um, unfortunately, the, 
the people in Colombia, the people who vote again, uh, who vote for yes to peace in Colombia, and people around the world, we are doing demonstrations and supporting peace in Colombia. And I understand, I understand that in, all, in different parts, um, people from vote against no are also participating in the demonstrations. Well, that's interesting. One of the uh, things that recently came out in the Colombian press, though, is that the uh, is the strategy that um, the uh, no campaign used in order to convince people. Can you tell us a little bit about what that strategy was? Uh, what did they do, and why was it successful? Yeah, uh, the the campaign against no they use um, they really don't use the truth because they say things like that the. Um, the government, the government is going to take money away from the retired people to give it to the FARC. The other thing is that they are going to give the country to the, um, to the Castro Chavismo. And the other thing was, uh, because Colombia is a very religious country, they used the, um, the part of the gender that uh, respect all genders and all ideas, and um, the, um, the, thing, the thing that is very difficult for people is to accept the, the homosexuals and the people from the LGTB, and that was a lot of things around that. And they lie uh, about these things, that children in the schools are going to become homosexuals because they are going to allow people to do that. It's very ignorant, ignorant country. <laughs> Not everybody, but a lot of people. And I talked to somebody yesterday, and he said that Colombia still is in the 20th century, that we have to move and be more, more uh, updated, and we have to move to the 21st century now. And what do you think that this uh, says also about the Yes campaign? I mean, it sounds like it was not particularly effective. What do you think? I mean, uh, they didn't seem to uh, really follow much of a strategy, or, or uh, what was your impression? The, the problem was that we only have, I think, five weeks to do this campaign, because we don't know the agreement until five weeks ago. And, um, and I think the... the the, pedag the pedagogy for peace has to start maybe before, but we, we, we don't have the, the agreements and we only start the campaign five weeks ago. And I think that was one of the problems. And one of the um, individuals or organizations that seem to have gotten a lot of press in Colombia and also internationally was Human Rights Watch. Uh, tell us a little bit about their role and why they were opposed, why they Basically, they didn't come out and uh, saying that people should vote against the agreement necessarily, but they said they were uh, very uh, questioning of the agreement. What, what was their role and what impact did that have? I think the main point was the, pay, the point of justice, uh, because um, the in the transitional justice, the main, uh, the main punishment is not jail. But um, yell is not the only way that you, that you can apply. That's why I call transitional justice. It's different ways to get these people to, to, um, to don't be in the impunity, the, the thing that they commit don't be in the impunity. But the main thing is that um, a lot of organizations in Colombia, especially the human rights groups, they are very upset because they believe that uh, uh, Human Rights Watch do not, do not have any respect for the groups in, groups in Colombia. And um, they are really upset about this situation. And so now what do you think will happen now? Both sides have said that they will uh, return to the negotiations table uh, to find a way forward. W what do you expect to happen? Okay, uh, I think all the people in Colombia, we want peace because no one of us know what is that. We always we keep living on, on this world, and we don't know what is peace. And maybe that because we don't know what is peace, some people are against the peace. But everybody wants peace, and we expect 
that we, uh, we reach this agreement because this agreement is not perfect. But no, no agreement is perfect, but we need to go ahead and we have to reach the peace in Colombia. And now with this um, Nobel Prize, I think they give us a little um, strength to continue because we need to get there. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Christina, for having joined us on the Real News Network. Okay. And thank you for watching the Real News 